Welcome to this short video on process validation for medical devices. I'm Helena Yelmefjord, and I have worked with medical device product development, quality management, and risk management for over 20 years now, and I think it's both interesting and important to work with medical devices. In this video, I would like to bring you up to speed on process validation. I will show you what process validation is and the general requirements on process validation. The goals of this short video are that you should get a basic understanding of what process validation is, when you should perform process validation, and why you should care about it. And based on that, you should be able to figure out if the full online course on process validation that we offer on medicaldevicehq.com could help you in your job or your career. The full course is similar to this one, but much more comprehensive and with more in-depth information and quizzes at the end of each topic to test your knowledge and understanding. When you take the full course, you will also receive a course certificate at the end, which many auditors will be looking for. If you're completely new to process validation, let me start by telling you what it's all about. Now, let's say that you have a process in your production where the output cannot or is not fully verified, meaning that you cannot measure or determine that the product that is produced is actually according to specification. This would in turn mean that any deficiencies would only become apparent after the product is in use. If that's the case, the process must be validated. Now, what does it mean when I say you cannot verify the output? Now, luckily, there is a simple way of explaining it. I think it's easiest to consider a match. Let's say that you're in the match manufacturing business. At the end of the production line, you want to confirm that the match you've made is actually a good match. Now, how would you do that? Now, one way would be to light up the match and see that it works as intended. However, this means that you no longer have a working match. Now, this is a stereotype example of a product where you cannot fully verify the output of your production process, because if you did, it means that you have destructed your product. In theory, one could measure the match and do a chemical analysis on what's in it, but you won't know if it's really lightening up without trying it. That's why you are required to perform process validation. The same applies if you can verify the process, but have chosen not to. Now, before we go through the steps of process validation, let me expand on this a bit. So far, I have only talked about process validation for processes in production, and you might be thinking that you don't need to worry because you don't work in production, but process validation might still apply to you because process validation applies not only to production processes, but also, for example, to software that is used in the quality management system and a few more areas. And when we speak about production processes, they would normally be validated for the first time as part of the design and the development transfer. First, let's have a look at standards and guidelines available for process validation. There are detailed requirements in ISO 13485, 2016, Medical Devices Quality Management Systems. ISO 13485 contains requirements relating to which processes that must be validated and how it should be done on a high level. ISO 13485 is a harmonized standard in EU and is part of the QMSR from the US. And this is a standard that is very likely applicable to you. The ISO TR 8002-2-2017 Medical Device Software Part 2 Validation of Software for Medical Device Quality Managed Systems. This is a technical standard providing guidance relating to validation of software that is used in the QMS. It is very useful, for example, when validating an eQMS. And lastly, we have the GHTF SG3 N99 10 2004 Quality Management Systems Process Validation Guidance. Now that is a very long name. And I will refer to this document as the GHTF guideline moving forward. So what is the GHTF guideline? GHTF stands for Global Harmonization Task Force, and they have compiled a guideline on process validation for medical devices. This document can be found online free of charge. This video and the online course is based on this guidance. Now, let me lead you through the activities involving process validation. A typical approach to process validation would be to first establish a document procedure or an SOP, which is required both when selling to the US and the EU markets. This SOP should be based on standards and guidelines I have just mentioned. 
For processes that should be validated, the steps shown here may be included. But before we go further, let me first explain some abbreviations that are used. User Requirement Specification is abbreviated URS. Installation Qualification is often referred to as IQ. Operational Qualification is referred to as OQ. And lastly, we have the Performance Qualification, abbreviated as PQ. I will be using these abbreviations moving forward. To begin with, the URS should be established. In the URS, the requirements for process equipment are defined. What could these requirements look like? I will tell you more about this in the full course. The process should be analyzed, both from a general and a risk management point of view. Based on this, you can plan a validation approach. The validation approach or plan should normally be based on statistical rational. A full validation would at least contain an installation qualification, an operational qualification, and a performance qualification, or the IQ, OQ, and PQ. During the IQ, you would, for example, check that the equipment is intended to be used for the purpose you use it, and that it has been installed correctly in the right environment. You would often check off requirements in your URS during your IQ. If there is software in the equipment, a software validation is often included in the IQ activity. During the OQ, you could say that you are stress testing your process. For example, you might be running a process with a lower than normal temperature and then at a higher than normal temperature and check that the output of the process is still within specification, even though if you have varied the temperature. The parameters will be depending on the process type, typically temperature, flow rate, pressure and moisture. The aim of the PQ is to demonstrate that the process will consistently produce acceptable products under normal operating conditions, that is, the settings that you define in the OQ. For example, you would include letting different production personnel run the process to verify that the output is still within specification, regardless of who is doing it or which shift they are working in. And even if there's no formal requirement on running three PQ batches, you should. You might let the Monday morning shift run one batch, the Wednesday evening shift run a second batch, and then the Friday night shift run the third batch. The output of the process are then analyzed to verify that they are still within specification. At this time in the validation, after having gone through the IQ, the OQ, and the PQ, we've checked that the production equipment is installed properly and used for the right purposes. We have challenged the processes by ch changing the parameters up and down and let different people run the process to check that every time the products or parts that come out at the end of the process meet the predefined specifications. If we've done this with a solid statistical rationale behind it, we should be able to trust the process for some time without verifying the output. And if you ever need to prove that to someone, remember, you need to maintain the records from the validation. But we can't trust the initial validation forever. That's why the manufacturers also need to monitor and control processes and revalidate them as appropriate. Some processes may require revalidation very often, whereas other processes would be revalidated more rarely. Standards also define the interval of revalidation for some processes, for example, revalidation of sterilization processes. And keep in mind that the revalidation may be necessary when changes are made to a process. Now, I have spoken a lot about how to perform process validation. And as mentioned before, ISO 13485 contains a requirement that there is a document procedure for process validation in place, which is well aligned with what I have just described. Before, I said that process validation is not only required when a production process cannot be fully verified or is not fully verified, but there are more situations where process validation is required. I will start by talking about one category of processes that must be validated. And these processes include software. The first requirement is relating to software used in a quality management system. This could be, for example, if you have an EQMS solution, a software-based complaint handling system, or a software for risk management. Secondly, you also have to validate computer software used in production and service provisions. This could, for example, be a robot or software that controls a machine used in production, but it also could also be a machine controlled by embedded software. And this is quite common in automated production. And lastly, validation is required when software is used for the monitoring and measurement of requirements. 
This could, for example, be a software that is used to analyze products in process or finished products before release. For processes in production, as soon as any part of your production equipment is controlled by software, whether it's embedded, standalone, customer, or off the shelf, it must be validated. Switching over to the other category that requires validation, this is where we have the production processes where the output cannot be verified or you have chosen not to. The first clause refers to this in general, and in 7.5.7, .7, it is specified even further when it's specifically calling out for processes for sterilization and sterile barrier systems. So, why is it important to validate sterilization and sterile barrier systems? Firstly, some products must be sterile so that we don't give people infections and accidentally kill them as a result. Secondly, there is no way to tell that the product is sterile without making it unsterile by opening the packaging or the sterile pouch that the product is in, thus we cannot verify sterilization. And this is why sterilization must be validated. Actually, there is no way to verify the welded pouch either, because you would have to tear it open to tell if the weld is according to specification or not. It is very much like the batch that we discussed at the beginning of this video, where you cannot verify it without destroying it. Now, let me show you a number of processes that should be considered as process validation candidates relating to production. And they all share that it is not possible to fully verify the output. They include injection molding, printing, gluing, soldering and welding, and heat treatment, sterile barrier systems, and sterilization. So if you have any of these in your production, they are candidates for validation. There may also be other manufacturing processes that may need to be validated. If you have any of the processes above in your production and they are not validated, it's a good idea to validate them now. You can learn more how to do this in the full course. Validating a process could take anything from a couple of days, assuming it's a very simple and relatively harmless process, up to several months and many man hours, depending on the level of ambition, the inherent risk in the process, and what is required from a statistical point of view. Remember, if you have outsourced the production of products, the requirements of process validation can also apply to the processes that the suppliers are carrying out. That was a quick introduction to process validation. I hope it's given you an idea of what it's all about and an understanding of the requirements involved. If you want to learn more, we also have a full course on process validation available at Medical Device HQ. Thank you.